What's up people? Good day, good morning, good evening. How are we all doing today? So today's daily verses are second Corinthians 6 14 to 15 and I'm reading from the NLT otherwise known as the New Living Translation and it reads Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? So what is that telling you? Give me one second to just think about that. It's telling you not to be a partner with evil. So it's literally, the Bible tells us, you know, we should come out from amongst the, the unbelievers, amongst the people of the world and stand opposite to them. We should behave opposite to the world. When the world what the world says is, is, is evil, or oh, sorry, is, is good is often evil, you know? And, and what a lot of the things the world says is evil is often good. Not everything, obviously, but so like if you compare it biblically, compare the world's values biblically, like to the word, it doesn't align. So we just stand apart from the world, standing in the Bible, not in what the world says is good or right. We should stand in what the Bible says is good or right. So that means we can't team up with unbelievers because it will compromise our beliefs, it will compromise our values, and it will compromise the perimeters of our principles. So that doesn't mean you can't be friends with unbeliever or you can't mingle with unbelievers at work or whatever. It means careful with who you align yourself with in life because who you align yourself with in life will affect who you become. And who do you want to become? You want to become more like Christ. You want to become more like the world. You want to become more godly, more positive, more righteous. You don't want to become more worldly, more evil, more negative. You need to move away from these things and become more like Christ. We need to become Christ like in all that we do. We, should, we shouldn't be like thinking, oh, if I, if I do this, if I, if I behave this way, it's cool. No, you should look to put to death your character and take on the character of Christ that permeates love, that permeates, you know, wisdom, which, which permeates strength and power from God, which permeates obedience and self-discipline. You shouldn't be seeking, you know, the world's ways of things or what the world says is love or good or bad. No, follow the Bible and what Christ say. It says here, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? So where the light is, the darkness flees. Like, so I, I say this repeatedly all the time, like when you turn on the light switch, that the darkness doesn't fight back against the light. The light, the light, the light basically casts it out. The darkness flees from the light's presence. And that's exactly what we need to be in this world. We need to be a light in which the darkness flees from. So we can't be like partners with wickedness because we can't, light cannot live with darkness. If light lived with darkness, the light would become dim and then the light would go out and become darkness itself. And God's light can never go out, it can only go forth. And, then, and if it, and it, it can only go forth and we can't live, we can't live with darkness. So that means we need to be very careful when we're choosing, you know, husbands, when we're choosing wives, but we choose believing godly husbands and wives, otherwise, we're going to compromise our beliefs, we're going to compromise who we are, and we're going to compromise our standing in the world. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose, like, uh, salvation, your salvation. No, we're saved by grace through faith. And what happens when we have faith? The works follow the faith, yeah? Faith without works is dead. So the works should be the proof of our faith. It doesn't mean we're saved by our works, we're saved by our faith alone. And obviously, if we're with someone who isn't a believer, that doesn't mean we're we've lost our salvation, but that puts us in a very compromising position. Whereas if we're, with an, if we're with an unbeliever, they might be like, oh, let's go over there, let's do this thing, or do that thing, or do that thing. And that goes against the word of God because they don't believe, they don't know, they don't have that education. And then suddenly you start compromising your, the works of your faith. You start compromising who you are, and that eventually will lead to the loss of your faith. And ultimately, you, you're, you're gonna perish, you're gonna die in your sin, you know? So we need to be very careful because that's how the devil gets you. He gets you little by little. He doesn't come at you like straight away with something like, oh, oh look, look at this unbeliever, let's go do, you know, let's take this unbeliever, go do all these different sins. No, no, no. He comes in, with, like, he'll come in in the disguise of someone you love and he'll be like, oh, I love this woman, this man, but I know she doesn't believe in the same things I do, but I love her. Uh, maybe she will change and stuff like that. And that's true, she, but she might, they, may, they might change, but then the, the danger is there, you know. They might, they might decide to influence you to go a certain direction in life. And then suddenly, little by little, your faith starts becoming compromised by the small things, by the small compromises. And then these build into big problems and ultimately you lose your faith. 
Remember, we are saved by faith through grace, and if we don't have faith, we're not saved. And that's an important thing to remember. There's too much light nowadays in the church about... Uh, I talk a lot about, obviously, prosperity and these kind of things, and there's a lot about uh, like what we can get in faith, or like the, the amazing blessings of God, but no one talk about the hard bits, you know, the bits, the nitty-gritty, the stuff that, you know, it, it can cost you your future. And this is one of the things, you know, this is something that could cost you, like, eternally. So you have to be very selective about who you choose as a partner. Look for people with godly principles, with, with boundaries, with perimeters that are godly, which are biblical. Don't look for people of the world who are out there, you know, in the clubs doing this and that, who might be flexing on the gram, or dancing on TikTok every other day. No, look for someone who's godly, who's in their Bible, who's in their church, who's serving God, who's, you know, who's a, who's a, who's a powerful believer, who, you know, is, is, is modest in their behaviour and how they dress, how they look, and then you know you're, you're, looking, you're looking for the right person, you know? It says here, what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? Yeah, see, look, there can't be no harmony against Christ and the devil. Now you've got, we have Christ within us as believers, and whoever's out there who doesn't have Christ in them, is, whether they know it or not, they're under the spirit of the devil. And you have to be very careful, and it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard, like you forget, but we're in a spiritual battle. Like we're out there every day of our lives, you know, we're at the workplace, and you're like, oh, this guy doesn't believe, this guy's Hindu, Muslim, whatever. And we think, oh, and we think, oh look, and that's all cool, these people are nice people. Yeah, they could be nice people. They could be, they could be uh, as far as, the, as a, in a worldly perspective, as the world says, is good. But as we know, the, belief, the Bible says that none of us are good, but our righteousness is like filthy rags in comparison to Christ. But anyway, they could be nice people. But, but at the end of the day, you know, if they don't have the spirit of Christ in them, they have, they have the spirit of the devil or his demons or, or evil negative principalities manipulating them. So we have to be very careful about what we do in the world how we view the world, what lens we see it through, and then we also remember to see the world through the lens of the Bible at all times, otherwise we end up stepping in correct. And when we step in correct, we start partnering with darkness instead of the light. And that's when we start to lose the light within us and we start going to the dark side. Not the dark side, as in like Star Wars. I'm talking about <laughs> I'm talking about evil, you know? We start going to evil. So like uh we we gotta start residing in the light and the only way you can do this is to partner ourselves with people who are believers in every aspect of our lives, you know? And that, well, sometimes I know that isn't possible. We must be careful who we align ourselves with and remember their values because light cannot be a partner with darkness. Christ cannot be a partner with the devil. We must stand separate from the world. We must stand in the light, stand in God's righteousness, stand in positivity, stand in love and stand opposite to the evil in this world. And we must call it out and cast it out wherever we go. So today I, I beseech you to look to partner yourselves with a, with a righteous man or woman, righteous people in life, and go a place, and go a place which is more positive, eliminating sin and evil from your life. Have a great day today, in Jesus' name, amen, peace. Thank God it's Sunday, I've had gun on my line, that's just what the enemy do. Big bro told me, pat my mind, that's just what the fellowship do. Free up all of my guys from sin, that's only what Christ can do. Enemy try hit me with a lie, that's just what the enemy do. But the enemy was born to lose. We were born to conquer. He made my feet like the feet of a deer, that's why I got an air sponsor.